We're trying to decide what to start with tonight. <laughs> and we've started with the place of song every night because somebody's requested it. And we had a request to start with it tonight, but what we're going to do is we're going to start with another one. But Keith didn't get a chance to practice it with Randy again, so we're going to start with the same old song we started with every night. One that's on the new album in the back, and one that Cindy and I wrote, one called Sing Me a Good Old Fashioned Song. Thank you. 
song right now, one called I Believe in What He Died. He died for me. special because of the price we had to invest to get it on the market. Tapes are seven dollars each, two for twelve or three for fifteen, and again the new tape is seven dollars by itself. The last song I wrote just a couple of days before we recorded, we got it the other night. I'd like to do it again for you tonight. It's one goal when I see the man with the nails coming hand.
question I'll answer, amen, that you never understood. One of these days when you see the man with the veil scarred hand, Sister Fields, amen, we're going to understand there was like somebody said, I'm going to ask Jesus about this or that. Brother Bill, I'm not going to ask him about anything on that day because the Bible says that then I'm going to know. Amen. When I see him, I'm going to understand all the things that have been darkened to me. Sister Webb, I'll see the man with the little scarlet hands, but I'll understand everything in his life. We held the list to wash as our loved ones. They're taken in death to the grave. The sadness and tears were laid in the rest. Anxiously waiting for the day when angels of thunder sound be free and the dark clouds will all go away. And we'll see the man with the nail scarred hand, but we'll understand everything. Oh, you made the father's dream. 
I'll guarantee you that it will benefit them. When we're talking about our church, I believe that if we'll talk about its assets, amen, rather than about its liabilities, if we'll tell people about its good points rather than about its faults, uh, oh, we'll see our church begin to grow. In our text, the Bible says here that this woman was having a conversation. Uh, now she is not talking to someone who is with her, uh, but the Bible says that she is talking to herself. Uh, amen. How many believe that people talk for themselves? Uh, I went down down today and I rode around a little while, Brother Montgomery, and I was amazed. Uh, about 90% of the people that I passed walking down the street, uh, about 90% of the people that I passed in the automobile, uh, I looked over there and they were talking to themselves. Uh, I thought, amen, there are people that talk for themselves, and if you don't believe me, uh, and you just ride downtown or drive down the freeway and walk them up, and I'll guarantee you'll find out that they're there. And so we ought to be very careful what we say to each other because our words have the power to help or the power to hurt. But I believe with all of my heart if we're careful to be here, if we're to be careful what we say to others, we're to be even more so how we talk to ourselves. And if you know something tonight, amen, you tell me what kind of a talk you have with yourself, and I'll tell you what kind of a person you are. And you tell me what kind of a talk you have with yourself, and I'll tell you what you're apt to become. And so tonight, if I can preach to you for just a little while, I want to preach to you upon the call of have a little talk with yourself. Now, there are two different kinds of talk that you can have. I find that the first one is an encouraging talk. Amen. I thought of Paul writing in the book of Philippians, and he says to them in so many words, he said, I know what it is to be amazed, and I know what it is to abound. He said, I know what it is to be full, and I know what it is to be hungry. I know what it is to suffer need, and I know what it is to have everything other than a man could ever desire. And you see, Paul's life was a life of a man of leisure before he got saved. Paul was a man brought up in the Jewish traditions. Paul was a man that was set aside, and he wanted for nothing. He commanded respect and held a place of authority. And my friend, he could just snap his fingers, uh, and he had men coming to his call because he was a man of authority. Uh, oh, but he gave it all up for the day, uh, and then Jesus on the way to Damascus. Uh, and you know what? Next time you see him, you see him in a jail cell. Uh, and he's not murmuring, and he's not complaining, and he's not griping. Uh, he's having a little talk with himself. Uh, and you know what he says? He said, I can do all things through Christ that's greater than me. Uh, amen. Greater is he that's within me than he. Uh, uh, within the world. Uh, oh, Paul said, I realize I'm in the prison cell. Uh, I realize things may not be uh, as great as they were for once were. Uh, I realize that I may not have everything that my heart desires. Uh, oh, but I, I, I know that I have Jesus and that's all that matters. You see, he had, he had an encouraging talk with himself. On the other hand, I thought about a discouraging talk that I read about in the book of Mark, the 14th chapter. And I read about Peter there, and how he denied the Lord's sister Webb. Amen. I find that Peter, not many hours before that, was in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus prayed. And he said, they're coming to take me away and crucify me. This same Simon Peter jumped up and said, Lord, if they take you, they're going to have to kill me. I'll fight to the bitter end. You remember how they came into the garden there, and Peter pulled out his sword. Amen. Spoke the, the, the servant of the, of the high priest and cut his ear off. Amen. Not many uh, hours after that, brother uh, of Vandenberg, they were down there at Pilate's Hall, and Jesus was inside talking to Pilate. Uh, uh, Peter was no longer in the presence of the Lord, but he was in the presence of the enemy. Uh, I can't you just hear him having a little talk with himself? A uh, uh, one of them old lady looked out there, sister in heaven, and said, My, uh, uh, there's one of those guys that followed after Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, I know it's him by the way that he talks and the way that he acts, uh, and I recognize that face that old Peter looked around and said, Sister, uh, have you got the wrong guy? I said, I don't know him. I don't want to know him. Uh, I said, You see, I'm just a poor old humble fellow passing by. Uh, I can't you just hear the enemy whisper in his ear uh, and said everybody else has run off and left Jesus uh, and you're the only one here among a bunch of heathens uh, who's ever going to know whether you deny him or whether you uh, 
uh, stand up for him. Uh, and so this reward he had and discouraged him off with himself. Uh, and he talked himself right into saying, I don't know Jesus uh, and I don't want to know him. Uh, you see, he had a discouraging talk. Uh, and he said that I do not want any part of him. Uh, and the Bible says that when the cock grew that Peter called to mind the words uh, of the Jesus that unto him. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Amen. Now, I thought of a great evangelist, a great Methodist evangelist, by the name of Luther Bridges one time. Amen. I'm talking about have a little talk with yourself tonight. While I'm thinking about it, I want to say thank you to these teenagers in the morning. They've been one of the best groups I've ever preached to. Paula and Sonia had not talked a time. I said I was going to mention that before this revival's over. Amen. I appreciate them tonight. They've been a wonderful audience. I'm talking about have a little talk with yourself tonight. Amen. Now this woman, the Bible said, had a little talk with herself. The Bible said she said within herself. Now what did she say to herself, Brother Vandenberg? She could have said some very distressing things. Did you know that? She could have said, well, life's been cruel and it's cheated me out of the only opportunity of this day. That is being a wife and of a mother. Amen. This may have been softened at first because the Bible said, Sister David, that she was a man, a woman of some means. Amen. And it said that for 12 years she had gone to doctor after doctor after doctor. And all they believed her of was her money. And you'll find that we find her not only in a state of poverty, but still yet in a state of affliction. And just a way she could have said, Well, I've done everything I know how to do. Amen. I've not been a coward. I've tried everything that I know. And I'm suffering through no fault of my own. I've not been a coward. And if there was a God, He would not have allowed me to suffer. Like this, oh, how you deal with a bitch for her to, to for her uh, to have had this kind of a conversation with herself. Uh, but if she had talked to herself in this fashion, I'll guarantee you one thing uh, she would have become a hopeless invalid, uh, or she would have jumped up on some building and jumped off and took her life. Can you say, man? There was a great sailor by the name of Christopher Columbus one time sailing to a Now, what did this woman say to herself? Sister Webb, she said, I'm sick. <laughs> and I know this. This is not a secret. I've had an issue of blood for 12 years. It's a fact that I wake up with every morning and go to bed with them or not. Amen. Yeah, she said, you know what? I'm sick. This is true, but I'm not dead. And she said, there's a new personality on the scene, a man by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Said, I've heard about him. Said, my, he's been making the lame, the walk, and the blind, to see, and the deaf to hear. Sister Moser said, I even read about ten old lepers that he touched and amen that they were all right. Amen said, you know something, I'm going to go down there to this Jesus and I'm going to believe that if I'll do my part, he'll do his part and I'll be made whole. Now she have had our attitudes the way we are a lot of times. She have said, well, I'll go down there and meet touch as me and he heals me. It's all right. If you don't, I'm not any worse off than I was. I'm sick anyway. If I come home sick, that's all right. I'm not improved, I've just not got any words. They remember, she said, I'll go down there and I will not fail. She said, I will not fail. I'll touch the hem of his garment and I'm going to be made whole. You see, this is the way that the Bible says this little woman talked with herself. Now somebody said, Brother God, what was the outcome of this talk? Now number one, by talking this way, she kept alive her hope. How many knows what I'm talking about? When you lose heart and when you lose hope, you are through whether you know it or not. I know people that have believed that they were going to die and there was no convincing them otherwise. Uh, and my friend, they just as well go out and get themselves a cemetery plot because they're dead. I